some of them reach a height of five stories. Tunis Air, a subsidiary of Air France, now makes it possible to visit the island of Gerba, which Homer called the island of lotus eaters. Gerba's unique snow white mosques contribute to the beauty of one of the most attractive and prosperous regions of Tunisia. The inhabitants are mostly Berbers, who have retained their old language and customs. Until Tunis Air started its service to Gerba, few strangers ever visited the island, and because of its isolation, it has changed little in the passing centuries. Dyeing and weaving are the most important industries of the island. Gerba wool is prized throughout Tunisia for its strength, quality, and the fastness of its color. Gerba is one of the most fertile regions of Tunisia. There are no streams on the island. All water comes from wells. During the dry season, the land must be irrigated, and camels still draw water from the deep wells in the same way it has been drawn for thousands of years. The women of Gerba wear straw hats. In North Africa, Gerba is the only place where you will find hats a part of a native woman's attire. The manufacturing of pottery has been carried on in Gerba since ancient times, and the method of working the clay has never changed. There are very few vehicles on the island. The natives' principal means of getting about is on mule or donkey back. The synagogue of Hara Serira, where, according to tradition, one of the tables of the law of Moses was found. For thousands of years, a Jewish community has existed on Gerba, and it has been a place of pilgrimage. The Jews earn their livelihood mostly as artisans. This girl is cutting rawhide. These narrow strips are used to make sieves. Jewish girls receive instruction early in sewing and handicrafts. Embroidery, done by the Jewish women of Gerba, is among the finest in the world. Over Tunisia, you will find 